Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Memphis Regional Championship. My name is John Kettler, and to my left is... Jeffrey Sarant Raps Sarant, man. How's it going? Oh, it's going dandy. Can't complain. We had a lot of fun in the intermission yep. between last uh, the last couple rounds. It's been pretty good. Uh, right now, though, we're about to go straight back to the action. We've got a couple pretty interesting decks here, don't we? Absolutely here. we got two, and it's actually going to be a very unique matchup here. So on the left-hand side, we got... Uh, sorry, left side we got Fernando Sal Sala, who's playing Zora Galisapai with the you know one one Macargo line in it. That's right. And it looks like we have a couple interesting inclusions here. So Pokemon players they call their single copy inclusions tech cards, little things that they splash in to give them mm -hmm. some additional options. And here it looks like in Fernando's list he's actually running a single copy of that all important, all powerful Tapu Lele card from Ultra Prism that lets you move around damage. Yeah. So. We saw that in the third round of this tournament, and it looks like we might see that again. Uh, although it looks like it's a little more awkward to use damage or magical swap as opposed to the first attack, which yep. might be a little easier to apply here maybe as a Rayquaza GX counter. Absolutely. I think that's the, that's the default you know, reasoning behind that there. While there could be plays, given that Zora Glispot is typically a two-shot deck, there could be times where... That damage spread around could be moved around through Master yeah. Swap as well. And then Gustavo, he's running a Malamar deck with a couple interesting inclusions right there. Yeah, it looks like Lulala Prism Star, uh, Mars Shadow GX. We see that uh, uh, heavy inclusion in that, and Rukan in his past uh, Oaks Regional. He played it, played two in his list there. Mm -hmm. And then straight consistency after that for Cynthia, for Guzma, for Lily, for Treasure, for Ultra Ball. Everything there to make sure that his deck is consistent and ready to go. And yep, it looks we got like the same thing there. Tons of outs to Tapu Lele GX. Tons of abilities to be able to search your deck and set up. And actually, speaking of which, we are just about set up. Both players ready to go. Traditional handshake. Got to have a little bit of sportsmanship. And we are off to the races. All right, here we'll see here. It's going to be starting off on Fernando's turn. Great ball right at the bat here. Piloting the Zorga Lispod deck. He does play a three count on these great balls. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Choose any Pokemon you find there and bring that to your hand. That's right. And with the change in deck engines, the change in way people build decks for the current format, we've seen nest balls, we've seen great balls rise in usage. I mean, Ultra Ball, it's basically going to be a close to staple, if not yep. permanent staple card, as long as it's legal. Mm -hmm. Just about everybody's running it. But nest ball and great ball, they're making a comeback. Yeah, absolutely. You know, really, the start of the season, great ball was not in a lot of lists. But then typically recently now, people are playing three to four of these copies. And you see that a lot in Zorak decks. And it's another one as well as Oracle Pod, people adding those additional three balls there. Yeah, and a very interesting development here is that we have seen several of these ball cards played alongside a supporter card, Apricorn Maker, which, mm -hmm. which lets you search your deck for two cards with ball in their name and put them into your hand. But that's been dropped from at least this list. Let's see what we have going on on Fernando's side of the board right now. I'm going to wait a second here. Judge put his hand out there, so yeah. I'm doing a ruling, so I'm going to wait to make sure. Uh, we're not giving away too much information as when the judge does yeah. speak with them. Uh, they do take their headphones off. So it looks like he may have been just one card short off the of Lily, and now he's going to be able to attach it. But there this is go. really interesting here. Okay. Okay. I guess he was not allowed to test double colorless. I'm honestly a little confused about that. Maybe yeah. there was a dispute about, I mean, blind speculation here, but it looks like there might have been a dispute about whether or not he wanted to attach it and whether or not it was taken back. That's the... Only thing yeah, I can really, that's really conceive weird, but right here. The hand here. was removed. Typically, I believe the rule is once the finger has been removed from the card, it is considered in play. So hmm. maybe the maybe a little bit of grace showing, or maybe, maybe. we're just missing a piece of the piece of the uh, piece of the pie there that we, we don't Could know. Could be. That's okay. I mean, Gustavo is still running along with his setup here, getting those inkes into play, and that's the reason why he runs just as many search cards as Fernando does. I mean, we see the same thing going on. The only difference is. We have Mysterious Treasures, which search your deck for Psychic or Dragon Pokemon with less of a cost than Ultra Ball. Basically, for the Malamar deck, it's like a better Ultra Ball. Mm -hmm. So running four of those for Ultra Ball, it gives you tons of consistency and tons of easy access to the Malamars to attach your energy and keep things rolling. Yep, so we do see the skateboard, two to Deoxys, two Mysterious Treasures uh, searching out those Inkes to get his board going here. Um, we do want to keep note here in this kind of matchup. You know, Zork does resist Psychic there, so um, being able to mitigate around that there, you know, through Necrozma GX, the uh, Black Ray GX can also help us solidify this matchup here. But overall, this is going to be a very, you know, intriguing matchup. Yeah, now if I were on Fernando's side right now, I'd wish that I had more Zoros in play, where Absolutely. the way that Zorak is going to win this matchup is by targeting down 
cards like the Malamar is trying to deprive Gustavo of his energy acceleration in the later turns. Because remember, with Psychic Recharge, he's going to be getting tons of energy back and have tons of threats on the board that will be relatively hard to knock out. I mean, mm -hmm. not the dark, weak ones, obviously, but ones like Deoxys take a little bit more work to deal with. All right, so we're back over now to Fernando's turn. We do see a third ink gate come down on Gustavo's side before the pass, but go opts to trade away to Tapu Lele. I don't think he needs that in this matchup here. Probably uh, not. Right there, so opts to trade that away to search for additional cards. We definitely want to try to get some Zoroots on the board for sure. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, he's got a couple pretty good threats, and if he has the follow-up in his hand, then he could be able to score a knockout this turn. But instead, he's only got Lily for a couple additional cards. Lily for two is a rough situation where if you're playing Lily on the first turn in the game, you're going to draw until you have eight cards. But with a bunch of cards he can't really use in his hand right now, it's just kind of oh unfortunate. Oh, my goodness. He had all three Malamars in his hand and a Cynthia to shuffle his hand to his deck and draw six cards. Uh, and he already has a couple energy to discard off the Mysterious Treasures from earlier. So yeah, big put, turn for Gustavo. Put some marinara sauce on that Calamari because it looks done. <laughs> It's well cooked and ready to be eaten here. It's going to start eating on the Zork here in just a second once it finds the attacker. Let's see, we're playing the Acrobite. Kind of contemplating what to discard. We're, we've seen this from a couple players this tournament where they're having a little bit of trouble choosing what they discard. It looks like that might have been a Mysterious Treasure to go down, but... Yep, Mysterious Treasure to down. Going to play the rest of the Treasure, bring back the, oh, the Cross okay. GX. That's going to be the GX oh, attacker of choice. That. And we're going to probably see either a Prismatic Burst or a Black Ray GX turn. It looks like it's going to be a Prismatic Burst, given that he attached that fourth energy. Look at that. Four energy on Necrozma right now. That is a one-shot against Fernando's only Zorark GX on the board. Things are not looking too good for Fernando right now. Oh, no. That's a, that's a quick setup from Gustavo. Beat him. Get all those Malamars in play. Load up through the Psychic Recharge ability. Start your discard pile for a second energy. Attach two Pokemon on your bench. Loading up that Necrozma GX for the knockout. Yeah, and meanwhile, Fernando's just kind of sitting here like, uh, I think I could use an energy or something. Something to help me knock out this Malamar. Something to let me just stay alive in this game. He like, definitely needs to put some type of pressure here right now, but um, he's going to be able to cycle through attackers now and, uh, on Gustavo's side, so Fernando needs a huge answer here, and he needs to be in the form of Zork GX. Yeah, and you know, Looking down Fernando's list right now, while he does have a lot of search cards, a lot of consistency cards, at the same time, if you hit some bad luck on a great ball, like we might have seen with the first turn of the game, then you don't have a whole lot of momentum going. And we're actually seeing a little bit of aggressive Tapu Lele playing right here. Mm -hmm. It's damage. It's something that can maybe help Fernando later on. But if I'm in that position, I am not happy with what I'm having to do or what I feel like I'm having to do. So granted, I mean, he's going to force Gustavo to have something in his hand, like Guzma, to bring the Necrozma back to the bench and just hope that he doesn't get knocked out this turn. But we already kind of know that that's just not the case. So he was able to Cynthia, wait, uh, Cynthia after, uh, off the Lele there, draws to a Zuru and also has a Nest Ball to get another Zuru. So helps out just to be a little slightly Guzma proof so he can guarantee at least getting a Zorak GX next turn. But outside of that, uh, I don't see much else going on in his hand. So he's just going to do energy drive here. 20 times the number of energy attached to both Pokemon. Only to a DC in play. Plus ch choice bands. Going to put down that 70 damage on the Necrozma GX. Right. So he's threatening a knockout next turn. But I don't really know if that's actually worth anything in this spot. Where he's already down four prizes once this Mal... Or this Mal... Uh, not Malamar. When Malamar Psychic recharges up Necrozma and knocks out this Glycopod. So he was able to goose yes. up, task the choice ban, recharge, and take out a knock on his goose on his Glycopod, Glycopod GX here. Um, what are you doing right now? What are you thinking if you're in Fernando's spot? Well, looking down Fernando's list, I mean, it's a pretty dire situation, especially since one foreseeable way he might have been able to deal with an energized Pokemon is using that Tapu Lele to just deal a little bit of ping damage. Mm -hmm. I mean... Really? There's not a whole lot? I mean, as far as maybe one thing he could do is set up some sort of knockout or simpler solution, just scoop and go to game two. Uh, I think that's the right call here. I mean, it still gives you the both players enough time to uh, finish two games here. Two for Nando, one more for Gustavo. But, um, you, you know, 
lightning fast start for Gustavo. Turn two, three, Malamars yeah. all off the bat. You you can't ask for much more. And if you're on your opponent's side, you wish you asked for a little bit less. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> like he didn't miss a beat at all that game, and Fernando was missing tons of beats there. I mean, the great ball wasn't that great for him. No pun intended. No. Uh, didn't full really see Zerua's. Say what? Say full pun intended. <laughs> uh, you, when you said that, I didn't. <laughs> but <laughs> at any rate, great ball not so great. Zerua is not so uh, Zoroy, not so uh, not so evolutionary or anything <laughs> like that. And we really didn't see a whole lot of setup, but things are. Going to be a little different this game. I mean, we have Fernando going first. We have another shot to be able to get those Zeruas out in the play, maybe turn the tide a little bit. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I'd like to see if I'm Fernando is more of that setup. I don't want to be giving my opponent mulligans. Yeah. I don't want to be doing that against Malamar because every little card is one more card that could chain them into that explosive turn one setup where they have yep. three Inke on the board like Gustavo had. But on the other hand, maybe I can go ahead and overcome that with, say, like two or three Zeruas in play on turn one. Yeah. That's going to be the big thing here because, you know, Zerua, sorry, Zorak does have that resistance to psychic type Pokemon there. So being able to get a lot of those out uh, effectively can help out your matchup a lot there, you know. Necros GX does have the options here through Choice Spam um, or you'll be able to get the four energy on it to do the first back first for knockout. But having that resistance does help. And he's just not, he's just canning mulligans left and right over to Kusabo. Yeah, and I mean, looking at the two lists here, it's like looking at Fernando's list in particular, he doesn't have uniquely bad odds of having to start with no basics and mulg in his hand. He, he runs a decent amount. So that just happens at times. Pokemon's a probability game. Uh, that might be a Tapu Lele start. So that was Tapu Lele long. GX or Tapu Lele Ultra Tapu Lele GX. I'm pretty sure oh, I, okay. I saw the full art GX there. Uh, yeah, uh, you're right. That's close. I saw the, I saw the pink. It was, we were close there. So on to on uh, Fernando's turn. Starting game two. Tapu Lele start. Draws return. And let's see what the first card he is going to play. Nest bar out the bat. We're going to grab a Zeru here. Uh, I guess I'm fully assuming there. But <laughs> I'm guessing a Zeru is going to be the card here to grab. That's a good assumption. Of course, he's doing the traditional flip through his deck to see if there are any prize cards, any important things. People usually do their searches to figure these things out one of two ways remember you have six prizes at the beginning of the game you're going to have four well six cards that you won't have access to at the very start so you kind of have to get a feel for what is in those six prizes mm -hmm. flip through it and for fernando some of his most important cards to look for are energy zorua's zoroarks to a slightly lesser extent but still the same thing getting a feel for how big your zoroark line is and we know for a fact that fernando has at least two zero in his deck with probably two zoroark to follow up you know i, I think the uh what you drew point earlier about like you know prize search to figure, figure out what is, you know is in your prizes and what cards you need to find is an underrated strategy in tcg and that a lot of top players uh hold 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 steady for themselves being able to you know figure out what's in there what their counts are right away right off the bat just through a couple few searches through their deck is uh is something that a lot of people's players need to develop on oh as, for sure as well as you know uh, how, how much it, how much the uh, value is from that and then the next step which i really liked was how quickly fernando did his mm -hmm. search where he really only needed about a flip through it maybe took him about 15 ish seconds to yep. feel out the whole deck normally players are given a little more of a customary leeway period during their first search because they're figuring out some pretty complex things, especially yep. with some decks over others. With Zoark, it isn't quite as bad as others. Another important card that important line that is that Fernando would be searching for is the 1-1 one, one line of Macargo, where approximately one out of five games, a piece of that's going to be prized, so it's really yep. important he knows if he's going to have it or not. This is actually uh, infinitely better than the last game. He was able to get mm -hmm. two, uh, start to Zeru, get a Nest Ball. Lily hit two great balls. Now he's going to have a Tapu Koko, Slugma, and two Zeruos on the bench. We had something kind of interesting happen earlier where he was presenting the Tapu Koko but put it in his hand. It's great ball, so it goes into your hand as opposed to straight onto the bench. So he probably wanted to wait a little bit to be 100% sure to bench that Koko. He's like, yeah, let's go ahead and put it into play and have things going the way he wants. So the pass over to Gustavo's turn. Uh, we do see an escape board right off the bat. Two to Deoxys, inactive, giving him that one less free retreat cost or one less retreat cost there, and then playing Nest Ball to get the second Inke on the bench. And let's see, we've we've got an attachment to the Inke. It looks like. So this is maybe going for yeah. a confused play here, a little little topsy turvy <laughs> action here with the Inke, trying to trying to get Lele turned around a little bit. 
Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that is, uh, th that's not our little sleepy buddy, is it? It's our confused buddy? It's our, our little sleepy buddy? Is it sleepy buddy? Yeah. Well, we'll find out in a little bit. And that's the thing about Pokemon status effects is that you instantly know what the effect is depending on what direction the Pokemon's turned. If it's turned to your left, then it's asleep. Turned to your right, it's paralyzed. Flipped upside down, it's confused. And you are correct that it's going to be a uh, uh, night night time for this Tapu Lele here <laughs> once uh, it is going to sleep. Yeah, Not and confused. And there's a lot of value in making a play like this because Gustavo inherently knows that Fernando wants to get a knockout on one of his Inkes this upcoming turn, right? Mm -hmm. So either way, worst case scenario, an Inke is going to get knocked out. But Gustavo's thinking, I might as well force him to maybe have that Guzma, just show it to me to knock something out or deal damage rather than just kind of, like, wait and take a hit. All right, we're going to see the, the roll here. Tail stays asleep. Heads, it wakes up. It looks like Tapu is going to be staying asleep this turn. I think he thought it was confused as well. Inke, Inke and Amalum are typically, like, yeah. confused-type Pokemon in the, in the VGC at times. So, and, hey, uh, we're, we're psychic-type Pokemon. We had that exact same issue with yep. the directions of the cards. <laughs> and I, think every, I think everyone might be a little confused right now. Yeah. Oh, he already like rolled. He already, he already rolled. rolled. So yeah. it looks like Tapalele is asleep. <laughs> I think I believe Fernando already drew, so we should just proceed over to his turn. Uh, yep, right at the back. Evolve to Zork GX on the bench there. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, had a little trade. moment there <laughs> where yeah. he thought the Zork was real was a Wimpod and decided, oh, wait, no, I'm going to trade this one. Sorry. Again, dropping a great ball down. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Find a Pokemon there and bring it to your hand. Want to see another Zork GX here? And there it is, right there. About third card in. That's right. Digging for that Guzma if he does not already have it. There's also just as good of a chance that he's sitting on the Guzma and is just going through the motions, drawing his cards, Absolutely. getting even more set up. And if I'm Fernando, I'm feeling okay about this, even if I get smacked by a, a Necrozma GX and next mm -hmm. turn or two because I'm probably going to get a knockout unless out of those two trades and the drawing up oh, there it is the Guzma for a knockout right on cue good to take out this Inke here uh, I would have liked to see a grass energy come down to the wind pod to help set up for um, first impression and also maybe uh, you know armor press the next turn but uh, was able to get a knockout on an Inke down to only two Inkes now so psychic recharge not nearly as effective as it was game one yeah, so he's going to be dealing some big damage if he wants to attack with that Necrozma GX's turn. But he still needs to Malamar. He still needs the energy in the discard. He still needs to actually be able to go through the whole motions of everything on his side the same way that Fernando did mm -hmm. with his board. Uh, fortunately, that it's an escape board test to Necrozma GX, not a choice ban. So he would need all four energies right now to take a knockout on the Zork GX. Yeah, and interesting to note is that he's got options to detach both. He has two choice band in his list, and he has uh, three escape boards. So he has both at his disposal. And interesting choice of actions here. I mean, there's logic behind it, especially since the last confusion. Oh, it, did that look like an okay roll to you? Uh, I, I, I'm going I'm to leave my tongue right over here and not say too much about it. Fair but uh, yeah, yeah. It, might, it might not have been enough. <laughs> well, I mean, that's okay. The judges over there, yeah. they, they, make the, they make the final verdict right. and that kind of thing. They they're they're, have, pre they're pretty good at what they do. Table and, uh, you know, it, probably, it may have fell under the guidelines, and they, they felt it was deemed enough. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it was a heads roll. Zork does stay awake off of the attack from Inke, and we do see a drop turn. And I think he's opting here, like, what to trade, what to go for, what do I not mind uh, discarding, to the, to the, uh, discarding oh. for a trade. Interesting little thing we had here with Fernando's side. So he was contemplating attaching that choice band deal plus 30 damage to EXs and GXs, but chose not to attach and instead holding on to it. The exchange there is that he is giving Gustavo free knowledge in exchange for not making a misplay. Like you were talking mm -hmm. about, Jeff, part of that order of operations is procedurally, if you drop the card down, then it's considered played. So yep. he's holding on to it. He's thinking about playing it. He chooses not to. And he avoids making a misplay, but Gustavo now knows that there's a choice band waiting for him. And he now has the McCargo out, too. So, you know, bringing it back to what we saw around four Connor, the, the incredible combo between McCargo and his smooth over ability to search your deck for any card and plays the top of your deck. 
and the power of trade. Uh, be able to get essentially any card you want every turn. And I like that he's actually starting to set up Golisopod as a threat as well with two strong attackers, not just Zorax hitting for Riotus beating, but having that is a looming threat. And I like the play here. He did he did get the cues, but they're choice span, full bench, hits the exact sweet number to take out a Marcelo GX, and that is 150 HP. Mm -hmm. On over to Gustavo's side, we did see Ultra Ball, Psychic, and Guzma go into the bin, evolving into Malamar. And I didn't see what a card he just played that. Was that an uh, additional Ultra Ball? I'm not oh, sure. Oh, Lele. Lele to the okay. bench for Cynthia. All right. Try to keep some of the, trying to keep some of that momentum going here, or rather getting it onto the board for the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, still, we're, we're still working here. I mean, he had to use Inkays to try to stall, get his board set up. Uh, but we do see one Malamar, and it looks like he's just scooping. Yep. Yeah, less than 20 minutes. We've already got two games out of the way. And there's some matchups that work out that way where we get set up pretty quickly and we mm -hmm. have two games blown through in less than 20 minutes and others where a single game could take over 25 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, merit to these guys, uh, you know, time management skills to understand that I need X amount of time to be able to complete this game. I am not at a point to do so right now in this game two and game one. So let's go ahead and scoop it up and move on to the next one. Right. And that's one of those little skills that goes a long way in a tournament environment where it's not enough to just be technically good at Pokemon mm -hmm. if you're slow when you don't need to be slow, mm -hmm. where you can always make the right technical plays, yep. but if you're not making those right plays in the context of all the rules of the tournament, you're just not doing it right, where it comes to a whole bunch of decisions. Time consciousness, being aware that it's best two out of three and not single game, knowing that advancing to the next stage of the tournament is based on match points. Yep. So being aware of all those little things making sure that you're actually approaching the game, not just as Pokemon the card game, but yep. Pokemon the card game in a tournament. Yep. Absolutely. I fully agree. And uh, it, it, this is a strong testament to whenever, especially like in the later rounds, honestly, when you, when you uh, can hone those skills as far as time management and knowing when to skip and stuff. Um, and the later rounds apply so big because you can't tie. The, more, the longer you go out to this tournament, and you ties become you know, more and more useless in a sense. That's right. I mean, being in a situation where you have, like, two or three ties, that could be by itself enough to keep you out of the next stage of the tournament if you lose a single game, mm -hmm. where All really right. it comes down to points. And we are back underway. Gustavo started with a Mimikyu and one Inke and Betch. Right off the bat, Ultra Balls, two Psychics, two to discard pile, and he's going to get that fresh start of Tapu Lele for the Lily to draw up to eight cards. Yeah, and I feel like he's already on schedule to get some of what he had in that first game where he's already got one Inke. He's going to be drawing a Lily for a lot. I mean, I don't know how much. Maybe we'll see the full eight card. Is it a oh, it was uh, one card one off. card away? Yeah. So one little fun sportsmanship thing that people do is with cards like Lily yep, where yep. if you have a completely empty hand, you go and you high five the other person. We might not. We might not have seen that here. Yeah, we we missed it last game, and I believe it was a funny little instance like that in Madison yeah. where it was a a few no hand sycamores, and it was just kind of like, no, I'm I'm good. No yeah. high five. So, eh, some is, for some is universal, for others, yeah, not that, so much. That's, that's right, and <laughs> you're probably less likely to see that sort of little goofy thing on stream because it's a different environment. Yeah. It's, it's a different setting, and a lot of people. I mean, these guys are pros. They played under the mic under the stream plenty of yep. times before but at the same time like people can get a little focused on the game it's it you feel different when yep. you're being recorded in a game versus just absolutely out in the field all right so we're uh, on to fernando's turn after uh getting two nks out and uh having energy to mimic you uh wimp start with that wimp out ability so at any point whatever you bench on the uh whatever you put on the bench you can actually switch that or retreat the wimp out of the bench and move it active we do see an ultra ball discarding what looked like to me a field blower and a choice band um and going through those most like you mentioned before checking the prizes looking through uh doing, doing, a, doing a little scan of what he has within his deck and uh try to see how he can approach the strategy going forward and with one zero he's off to a decent start, but if we only see that one Zerua, we're back to square one, where mm -hmm. just like we saw in the first game, Gustavo's having his setup, having all of his threats online, and what's the point of just the one Zoroark that's at risk of getting one-shotted? 
So it's another Ultra Ball going down. We'll probably see a mirror play here, getting mm -hmm. a Tapu Lele for the Lily to draw up to eight cards. We do see a Golisopod come to the bin, though. Uh, so, you know, got to keep that in mind. He does play uh, Rescue Stretcher, fortunately, to bring that back in the later game if needed. Um, but right now, it's not accounted for. Right, right. And with uh, with Fernando's list, he's got a 3-2 line of the Golisopod, meaning that he runs three of the basic that's on the screen right now, and he runs two of its evolutions. So even if he discards one, it isn't that hard on him, so he doesn't have as much pressure to say get the rescue stretcher mm -hmm. because of that line but it's something to keep in mind it gives him better odds for sure absolutely there so uh, tap a lily down grab the lily lily for up to eight cards and now a great ball we want to see another zero come down off the search of seven um, and you know like I said like, sorry, like you said redevelop and uh, enhance what he was able to do in game one and try to get a little further ahead so, but just a Zork GX off of the great ball and that's a dicey thing about Great Ball because it looks at only the top seven cards. While, yes, you can kind of control the odds of being able to get what you need statistically by running more of a card, mm -hmm. you still have to rely on luck to a certain extent. And he's wanting Zorua's. He's not wanting Zorark's. So he got the, the Zorark at that point, and uh, he hasn't shown what it is yet. I think he's still thinking about what he wants. It looks like he had an option of Zerua and... Oh, okay, sorry, it was Tapu Zerua. Lele, all right. The, the glares get there sometimes. It's kind of hard to yeah. see sometimes, but yep. And this is the curse of having to rely on the top seven cards. I mean, so he probably would have wanted... Here's an interesting question for you. You played two great balls before playing the nest ball. Do you feel that is correct order operations, or should have the nest ball been played prior to the great ball? That's a great question. I feel like that was the right approach because... By relying on the luck cards before playing the nest ball, he's trying to get Zerua's into play, right? Mm -hmm. So let's consider the nest ball a guaranteed Zerua. And the great balls, not guaranteed because they're luck-based. So yeah. he figures, okay, my ideal spot here is to have three Zerua in play and one Wimpod, right? So play two great balls, hope he hits it. Didn't hit it, but he's like, eh, it's okay. I can go ahead and nest ball, okay. get the second one, okay. hedge my bets a little bit. I like that, I like that. I like that thought, thought process a lot, actually, I, and I agree there. Uh, but we do see now Tuzaruro, Wimpod, retreat out, bench to Coco, make that active, and pass over to Gustavo's turn. Uh, and I'm trying to see what he has there. Lunala Prism, Prism Star in the Lasso, so I guess he must have Ultra Balled out of way previously to set up these uh, Malamar. But now he has two Malamars out. That's right. Lunala Prism Star being a pretty strong hitting card, being pretty good for accelerating your energy. But in this matchup, it's a little more awkward, especially when you only have two Malamar online like mm -hmm. what Gustavo has right now. So we do see Deoxys come down, so we're going to probably uh, see uh, that card get loaded up, get ready to hit here uh, for that 120 attack. Uh, quickly, uh, and hey, that's perfect math right now. I mean, it's a very solid approach for him to just go ahead and maybe rely on that as an attacker. Maybe let it get wiped off the board. Although, if I'm Fernando, I'm just going to want to target down Malamars. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately enough, it, it doesn't kind of have that sweet spot that some of these legendary 90x Pokemon have at that uh, 120. Uh, sorry, at 130 HP, it does have the 120, making it vulnerable to Zork GX. But uh, Power Blast going to come in here, do 120 damage. Discard energy back into the discard pile to be able to reload again later on through the Malamar's second charge ability. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a 90x Pokemon, so it's not doing too much to, uh, to hurt Gustavo here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, he has no GXs on the board except Tapu Lele, which is a lot harder to get knocked out at any point. But still, I mean, those are Malamars, fresh Malamars that can get knocked out. The problem for Gustavo in this position is that the Deoxys, while it's going to be hitting for big damage, it can set up some two shots on important GX Pokemon, dealing 120 or 100 or 130, depending on how resistance plans out, up to 150, depending on which GX Pokemon it is. He can apply pressure, but if I'm Fernando, I'm feeling pretty good if every turn I knock out a Malamar. Yep. And that way, once a bench spot frees up, if Gustavo wants it to be another Malamar, he's not going to have a spot for, say, like a Necrozma GX. Mm. And he's in a catch-22 position here where, okay, if I bench a Malamar or an EK to set up a Malamar, all I have to attack is, say, this Mimikyu, non-GX Pokemon. Good response attack, but yeah. not quite what he wants. Not the big damage of, say, Prismatic Burst. So uh, I guess I guess the, the, the summarizer you're saying, you're the, being able to condense 
what your opponent could bench down because of what he was kind of caught up with at the beginning between the Mimikyu, having to be there, and now bench Deoxys. He can never really set up a prismatic burst because it's either option A, put down another Malamar to set up, yeah. or Necrozma with GX. And I like the inclusion of Friend Ball, which he's playing right now. Yeah. And most Malamar lists, it's become pretty common. Yeah. Where Psychic, most players can probably agree, is the most played type in the game right now because most players are running Tapu Lele GX. Absolutely. So as long as a Lele GX is on the board, then you can search for a Psychic Pokemon. And hey, when your deck is entirely Psychic, why not? All right, so we do see, uh, looks like uh, Energy to Lele. All right, so he has, he has Energy to Lele, Gunner Retreat, Psychic Recharge, back up to the Deoxys, Guzma on Azurua. Oh. And it's going to be a knockout on Azurua there uh, through Power Blast. Uh, even through resistance there, it's still going to be enough to take out the knockout on Zerua there. So while both of them are kind of like, you know, taking little jabs at each other's uh, setup Pokemon, setup support, give or take, uh, you know, they both kind of have the same sim similar steps here. And Fernando's board is a little stunted right now. I mean, we talked earlier about trying to get more Zeruas into play. It's possible he might just not have had the Zeruas accessible to him, mm -hmm. but... With this devoured field going down, he's going to have perfect math. He actually already had perfect math against Deoxys, but more perfect math against other things. And with the counter catcher, yep. he's got that come from behind play that he absolutely needs in this game. Targeting down those Malamars like we've been talking about, knocking them out, applying more pressure, and putting Gustavo back in that catch-22 position. Where, so okay, counter catcher, for, oh, sorry about that. For oh, counter catcher for those that don't know what it does, uh, it's, it's like it applies the same similar effect as the first catcher prior, prior, the, uh, prior to the nerf, but it'll allow you to pull the Pokemon from your bench and make it active, but only if you're behind on prize count. That's right. In last format, we actually saw that card included a lot in Glycopod Zorark decks, and it's making a little bit of a comeback. It wasn't quite as popular in lists once the format was brand new, this yep. 2018, 2019 format, but it's making a comeback, and hey, we're probably going to see a Malamar knockout this turn because of it. Absolutely, and I mean, I, I like the strategies here on both players' sides to kind of go after, you know, for Fernando, go after these Malamars, and Gustavo going after the Zor Zorulas before the turn to Zorak GXs. So we'll search through, making sure that he has a pretty good feel for what Gustavo has in his discard, what's already been used. So, yeah, apply, applying the weakness policy here is really interesting. I mean, there's nothing really threatening his side for weakness here. But I'm guessing this kind of is more uh, preventative maintenance, really, to uh, you know keep, keep stuff out of his hand, which can keep them out of his deck as well. Yeah, well, there are a couple pretty good advantages to doing that. So he's anticipating that Gustavo might use Marsh Shadow GX to knock him out. Marsh Shadow GX copying oh, yes. Pokemon's attacks in the discard pile. That might have been another motivation behind Fernando looking through Gustavo's discard pile in his last turn, saying, okay, what Pokemon are knocked out? Okay, looks like there might be some threats available. Let's go ahead and plan ahead, drop that weakness policy, so at least require some sort of answer by Gustavo to deal with the weakness policy, which it doesn't look like he has. No, I don't see any kind of field blower at all. So once that weakness policy is, is applied, it is there for the duration. However, um, let's see. If he was able to get the Dawn Wings and the Cross with GX into the discard pile, he can use Dawn Wings just to tap with a choice band to take out a knockout. Uh, no, it'll still be just shy. Resistance will still be just shy for it for the knockout. Well, the downside here is it looks like it is four prizes to four. That attack, the GX attack, can only be used when you're behind on prizes. So at that point, it would be a, a non-starter like as far as being able mm -hmm. to use. Uh, there are some other options, though, just depending on what's in the discard pile right now, where there are some good attacks to copy, maybe OHKO options, one-hit one knockout options, that is, with the Mars Shadow, even with yeah. weakness not applied. So an advantage here of maybe going with, say, copying Prismatic Burst is that with a Choice Band, that could be enough damage even without weakness. Yeah. So Skateboard coming out to the active, bringing up Tapu Lele to be able to, looks like with the ch is a Choice Band on it, 20, 40, 60, 80, and Choice Band 110. Q 
keep in mind, because of Tapulator's attack, we do not, we're not factoring resistance. Energy Drive uh, does stay in the flavor text there that, uh, while it does, does damage their 20 times number energy, does not apply weakness or resistance. And now, after several turns in a game one that really just didn't quite go his way, it looks like Fernando's finally getting his bigger set up with two Zoroark in play more or less consistently. Yep. Multiple trades going on. Still trying to dig for those outs that he really desperately needs. Yeah, absolutely here. And, you know, he could actually pull off um, a pretty cool play if he gets all the pieces here. DCE, Choice Band, and Professor Kukui. Um, hard retreat to active Zorak and bring up the new one. Can knock out this Tapu Lele to bring them two, two prizes remaining. That's right. Another approach he could take is he could, let's see, weakness policy on the active. If he's sitting on the Choice Band, maybe one thing he could do is do a one-shot with Crossing Cut GX, yep. uh, do a one-shot. Let's see, it looks like we've got him setting up the bench as our GX, so. Actually, uh, it looks like he has one count of Kukui, so unless he hits his pal pad, he didn't use that Kukui earlier, when he, whether he traded or used right. it, but we do know it's in the discard pile. Okay. And a judge. The ju this is a very interesting order of operations right here. So we saw the max potion go down, healing up his active Zorak in exchange for discarding his double colorless energy. By my count, it looks like we've seen both trades used. And at any rate, his odds of being able to hit the double colorless energy that he needs to keep up the pace, relatively low. It looks like he, that's a rainbow energy. And he's like, okay, you know what? I can go ahead and attach that set up potentially two Glycified GXs during mm -hmm. the long run. And yeah, fortunately, I, I need to pull the there. Out. And, I, and I think it goes back to your point there. It's just the order operation. Maybe he should have held off his trade so because he knew he had a judge, or he may have gotten the judge off the second trade there. Maybe uh, it's not as clear-cut as that, though, because by playing the Max Potion, he is protecting his Zorark. The idea right now is that, okay, my Zoroarks are my draw power. They're one of my best offensive attackers. It's basically the heart of my deck. So by healing that Zorark up, he's going to be able to have access to more cards, more options later on down the line, and require Gustavo to have precisely the right combination of cards and he's notice noticeably not going up on prizes because mm -hmm. of what happened those turns so ultra ball does come down he does grab the necrozma gx uh and has it not he is putting it straight down to the bench here so looks like he might be going for a big swing here uh through prismatic burst that's right we've got him charging that Ultra Necrozma GXL. Oh, going after the Lele. He yep. does have the choice band, but he still wants to take those two prizes. Yes, sir. And by dealing that big damage, he is now go just two prizes away from winning this match. He's, despite never having had three Malamar in play, only two, he's actually stabilized his board very well mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah, he's been holding strong, running through, through only two psychic charges at a time. And, you know... Fernando, if he had the DCE Guzman another bench, that's right, DCE Kukui and another bench, he could get there. And there's a DC right there. He just got it. So if he can find a pal pad and circle cycle that, that uh, Kukui back in and maybe get off the next trade, which unfortunately does not look like it's going to happen now, he could get the knockout on the active blocker GX through to devoured field as well. Um, unfortunately, though, it does not hit those pieces. He's got a knockout on a Malamar if he wants it. it, that's I'm, it. I'm interested to see it what he's doing with this Lele here. He might be, because he has a Guzma in hand, he can use Guzma, bring up one of those Malamar, bring up his Zorak GX mm -hmm. with the weakness policy. That's that defensive play we're wanting to see when Gustavo only needs one GX knockout to win the game. I'm wanting to see one of those Malamars knocked out, just staying the course, committing to yeah. that general strategy and not really wavering, even though it looks a little shakier by being down two prizes. No, I definitely see your point there, because another thing that the, the kind of you know, piggyback of what you're saying there, with one Mal Malamar down, that is one less energy that can be applied to Necrozma GX, Deoxys, right. Mimikyu, whatever it is there, and which nullifies his setup while still progressing his own. Exactly, and the advantage there is that he's going to be able to give himself a little bit more leeway to adjust to whatever Gustavo does. So even though he's behind on prizes, he actually has at least one turn to kind of adjust himself. Now, going down the list here, I mean, we saw that Max Potion. Unfortunately for him, he only runs the one Max Potion, so whatever's going to get damaged here is going to be a liability for mm -hmm. him later on. I mean, there's just no way around it, but maybe just maybe just, maybe just still sticking with the general idea of 
knocking out Malamars, trying to deprive Gustavo of options, doing whatever he can to avoid Gustavo getting those last two prizes can be huge. Yep, absolutely there. So we do see uh, Cynthia right at the back, going to go uh, uh, psychic recharge, the only one he has to the Necrozmachi X on bench. Uh, looks like another mysterious treasure. I think he discarded a Malamar and going to do a full scope, but no... Uh, just a Deoxys. Okay, sorry. It was a little hard to see there. I don't see any EK, so it looks like they're all in the, in the discard pile or if any are prized. And I think actually after all those Guzmas, I'm pretty sure the, th the remaining the remaining ones are all in the bin right now. For which player? Gustavo or Gustavo, for, for Gustavo, sorry. Yeah. And that's the thing that happens in one of these longer games of Pokemon where cards like Guzma are really important to keep track of to make sure that you have as many at your disposal as you can. And the more that you lose, especially with a deck like this that's, while it's got lots of Tapu Leles and ways to search them out, it's not quite as easy to find them the way that you can with mm -hmm. the trade ability, discarding one card to draw two. So it's interesting not as... note here, I believe last turn, Fernando did trade away an Acerola. Acerola would be huge right now to keep it up right now, because now the Zork GX is going to be stuck with 110 damage on it. So that could be a, a, a hit from the Deoxys on bench, it could be hit from a Necrozma GX, could get hit for the Tapu Lele again. That's right, and I like finally seeing the Glyspot after all this time, after you had mentioned the discard of the earlier one, finally getting one into play as a real honest threat. So that way he can maybe apply some pressure, maybe score a knockout. I see with one choice fan on a Zorak, maybe... I wonder if the second one is actually... In, well, he's, he runs three, so he's got a little bit more at his disposal. And the Lele with the Lele coming enough, out. It looks like he harder retreats to Zorark. He might okay, be going for a Guzma play. setup. Yeah, he, I think he's going for a Guzma here. He's eyeing a little bit, trying to make sure that everything's going his way. And so does that? Does the Golisopod have a choice ban? Is he going to cross and cut on the Necros GX, oh, yeah. or is he going to take out the very last Malamar? Well, at any rate, he is going to orchestrate the best play that he can because he has smooth over Mikargo, letting you choose one card to put at the top of your deck after shuffling the rest of your deck, figuring out what it is. Gets a knockout on the last Malamar in play and just hope that Gustavo does not have the knockout out here. He's got an Ultra Ball in his hand. And you had mentioned earlier that we had seen some Guzmas in Gustavo's discard pile. How many do you, how many do you think we saw? Do you think we saw all of them? No, I, I, he, I think he's maxed out. I think he still has one in hand right there. Actually, we actually see the one in his hand remaining, so I guess it's just Actually, yeah, uh, because of the, oh, no, he needs, he would need to put two energy on the, on the Lele to be able to knock out the Zorg GX on bench now because he discarded that DCE. That's right. So That's a, a, really lot, a lot of preventative maintenance that yeah. nonchalantly Fernando did at his end. Yeah, he needed to do all of that because if he had misplayed and he had left that double colorless energy on, that would have been a liability. Yes. With everything as it stands right now, though, Gustavo needs more stuff. He so doesn't have any of the energy acceleration he needed, and at this point... He's threatening a knockout. It's important to keep in mind, though, that we saw an armor press from Glycopod GX, meaning that at the same time, while there are no good targets on the bench, mm -hmm. the active is not a really good target either because it's got 200 HP left, mm -hmm. and with guard press, with armor press reducing the damage, there's nothing that can knock it out. So it looks like Gustavo feels like he's just missing one piece right now, and yeah, because uh, he went to Ops to try to retreat to Deoxys, but. Uh, change his mind, so I guess he's just trying to figure out what the best option is. He could Psychic right now for what, 20, 40, 60, 80 minus the 20 from uh, Armor Press. So it's, it's not doing too much right now. No, and you know, Jeff, I, I feel like it really just all comes back to the very first turn of the game with that Mimikyu start. Yes. Where we have not seen that Mimikyu do anything this game at all, and it might be in part due to not having any energy on it. Not really much to do for the most part, but the fact that it's just something that he started with, it's not an Inke. Mm -hmm. And because it's not an Inke, he never was able to get out three Malamar at yep. any point in the game. And because he didn't have that happen, there was a chain reaction that occurred where he wasn't getting the energy acceleration, he was missing knockouts, and then his Fernando just kept on targeting down those Malamars, even when he was behind, even when he was down two prizes. He kept on doing that, kept on staying the course with it, and now he's got the board position to win the game. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's, he's just waiting on right now, and even Gustavo did even get a psychic energy on the Tapu Lele, so it's not like he's one turn away. He's still behind a few turns. 
to get the to get the end result game on the Zork GX on bench. Yeah, and now we've got a, a little bit of. If I, I would say if Fernando was just sitting on the win, he wouldn't be doing little things like evolving this Glycopod. He's just kind of taking what you said earlier, a little bit of preventative maintenance, avoiding giving Gustavo any openings. Remember, Gustavo's a former world champion. He kind of knows what he's doing. So being able to play at the top of your game to secure a pretty close game three mm -hmm. is what you need to do at this level. I mean, regional championships, world championships, internationals, we have some elite players at these tournaments, and you got to be on your game and avoid all those little misplays when you're even at round five. So, so it, you know, armor press the knockout, and we're moving over to Gustavo's turn for most of the Oxus now. What, what are his outs? What can he do right now to secure his win or even, you know, sl uh, slow down Fernando to not be able to take his final prize? Okay. Well, breaking it down, we really essentially have three major Pokemon right here. We have the Deoxys, which is at risk of being knocked out by Glycopod or by Zoroark. We have the Necrozma GX, which is at risk of being knocked out by a Choice Ban. And we have the Tapu Lele, which is at risk for being knocked out by a Choice Ban. And Kukui, like you had mentioned earlier. So really, in this spot, he is in the awkward position where... Depending on Guzma count, the players at the table have the best knowledge of that, especially with Pow Pad. Fernando's probably got a decent flowing amount of Guzmas going his way. So we've got a Guzma for the Micargo. Interesting choice here. Bring that up. And depending on... It looks like, it looks like we just see a pass. Yeah, he's gonna try, what, what do we see here? He does have a Malamar in hand, so essentially he's setting up his next turn for game, really. Um, he can be able to uh, choice ban, attach energy, second recharge, and Guzma up uh, for a knockout through Prismatic Burst with the Necrology X. Um, so that's why he's kind of helping his Makargo sit here for just one turn, and he can make it through. Yeah, and even though Fernando has tons of draw power, a really important search card in Makargo, Gustavo's like, you know what? It's on you, man. If you have what it takes to win, then go ahead and play it. Yep. And if you don't, I just found a way to come from behind a game I was ahead, but then kind of lost the lead. It's, it's really been back and forth. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Yeah. You got your ups, you got your downs, you got your tub turns, you got your loopy loops, everything. Oh, in a double couple of synergy on mid cargo. So he gets to, yeah. if he can find the, uh, he must be out of choice spans. He has to be out yeah. of choice spans because that was it right there across the cut GX for game. So all, all, the, all the choice spans must be gone for him to just miss that, that game winning KO right there. And it also looks like he's out of Guzmas too. Yeah. Where he has all the outs that he needs to be able to get it. So even without choice ban, I mean, that Deoxys was a liability. That Inke was a liability. Oh, yeah, he's one prize led. You're correct there. So That's right. Missing just a few things here. But there's the, there's the Malamar. Okay. Psychic and we've recharge. got Psychic Recharge. Do we have the energy and choice ban? And I think I see a Guzma in his hand. Actually, he doesn't even need choice ban. He's just oh. energy. So, oh, so he's bringing up. Okay. Does he have exactly what he needs? Oh, no, so he's making a defensive Guzma play here. And by that, I mean he's bringing up the Gu He's using the Guzma. Oh, and it looks like. What's that? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, it looks like. At least if, as far as I can tell, I mean. It looks like Fernando scooped. Let's see if we can make this out here. We might. I mean, this is the use of an interview right here is we'll be able to get a better idea of yeah, absolutely what here. occurred there. Yeah, I, I guess we missed something there, but something that, you know, triggered either player to where once that Lele was promoted and Guzman to Zor, oh, uh, you know what it is? What? Because that last DCE was attached to Macargo, that could have been his last DCE, and you made the point before that there's no Guzma, that Zor GX is now stuck in the active. So you saw earlier he was doing... That's right. So uh, you saw earlier he was doing counts of, you know, uh, Fernando's decks, saying, all right, yeah. where's he at? I'm going to count my side. I can just mill him out. I can yeah. just sit here and stall him out now that he attached that last DCE. So uh, I think that's what it was there. I, I'm going to probably say that's probably 90% accurate there. And uh, that's a good chance I think of Fernando that, yeah. did just scoop the game there because of that because of that decision to attach the DC to the Macargo. Yeah, it was a real real roller coaster there. I mean, we went from two really fast-paced games to a third game that was really methodical. We had mm -hmm. a lot of really creative playing there, a lot of conservative playing, and some pretty unconventional stuff yeah. too where sometimes it's not just about drawing six prizes, but depriving your opponent of resources. 
And I think that's one of the big things we saw in that game three as far as the blows going after, you know, uh, Gustavo going after the Zaruas and versus Fernando going after all the Malamars there. And even that unique turn to where he hard retreated the Zorark to save that damage output from the Lele on, on Gustavo's side, promoted the uh, act type of Lele with no energy, then Guzma the final Malamar. It was a, a unique sequence there to just not only put himself ahead as far as setup, but also take away outs for Gustavo to get the, the KO. So I thought that was a really unique play there also on Fernando's side. Right, and he pretty much committed to his course of play, which was a smart way to do it, be able to have a situation where, okay, you're going to go ahead and stick to what you're doing, go mm -hmm. ahead and try to get rid of the energy acceleration. But at the end, I, I mean, it just fizzled. Like, maybe one card off of being able to perfectly execute that win. Yeah, it may have been a couple too early, too early of trades of getting rid of stuff. Maybe some early Ultra Balls got rid of too many resources as far as those Guzmas and everything along those lines there. But uh, we'll find out here shortly here how, you know, with the winner here, Gustavo here. Oh, sorry. Do apologize. <laughs> no interview on that one right now. Uh, Fair enough. But uh, we are going to take a quick uh, break here. And we'll bring back, come back to you next with some round six action where it's going to be John and Kirk back on the ones and twos.